It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. Okay. <laughs> Just let go, man. Just let go. Just let go. Dude, fuck. Yeah. I mean, I, this is my, <laughs> I haven't watched this film in a long time and I made so many notes and and most of them are just copies of quotes because there's so many fucking good quotes in this movie. Right. <laughs> <God damn. clears throat> Let's get into it then, huh? Yeah. What what yeah. The, what dive is this? Number four of Number Fincher. Yeah. Number four of uh, David Fincher. We're in it now. We're balls deep. Yeah, we're getting into the meat. We're in. Now. Uh, yeah, we're in the grime. Like talk about grime. We're God damn. Yeah, we're in the fatty. Yeah. yeah. Egg. <laughs> we're talking, of course, about. Fight Club. Flash of a dick on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the one frame cut-ins of Tyler Durden just flashed behind you. I saw it. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> so what, you said, Noah, this is your second time. I want to say this is like my 10th plus time watching this movie, honestly. It's either so. my second or third. Yeah, I haven't watched 10 it. 10 times you've seen this? Uh, I've, put, I've put it on and watched this at least 10 times, yes. Holy shit. Yeah, it's, it's my second time. Nice. So... When I put it on, my wife said, why are you watching this again? You've seen this a million times. And I said, hmm. I want to watch it again, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> what did you it guys come good. up with on this uh, watch through? How did you guys like it? Well, my top of Fincher that I'd seen was Zodiac. And uh, this one, my, this watch through made me consider I might push this one. It's my favorite so number far. Number one, eh? Really? Okay. Interesting. Okay. Hey, you're number one, mm-hmm. yeah. So for me... I think like as a movie, it was good uh, and I wanted to like it, but uh, I actually I, I like at, like by the time the end was coming, I'm like, wow, I kind of just want this to be done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll explain later, yeah, but when you guys sure. can go. Yeah. What about you, Alex? How do you like this one after watching it so I mean, many times? It's fun. Uh, I, I like picking up little things that. You know, the the allusions to Tyler Durden from, like, the very start uh, that you just catch every time. Like, Mm. even the first, I want to say it was, like, one of the first things he says while, when he takes the gun out of his mouth, it's just, like, it tells you, basically, that they're the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's just, like... I don't know. This that was the one thing I picked up this time was that first like Tyler monologue. That one, right? Something. Yeah, yeah. That's that's when I that's what I took away from this, you know, sixty ninth watch through that I did here, sure. where I was just like, okay. okay, cool. That was cool. So yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's fun, crazy. It's chaos. It's yeah, yeah. There's What'd it's so think? layered, man. Oh, yeah, go very. I mean, I've like I said, seen it a lot. Uh, and I always, always had always had it consistently at four stars. I was like, that's a great movie, and everyone should see that movie. And that's uh, one of Fincher's good ones, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know something this watch through. I don't know why, because it took me ten to like think that this is a perfect movie. Honestly, I don't think yeah. I could. I would give. It, I, I'm on the board with you. What you're saying, Noah. I think this is a five star movie. I don't know if it's his best because Social Network is godly, but <laughs> yeah, um, this is easily one of his best. I. I don't really have a lot of gripes other than the story gets kind of like repetitively gross yes. and this like, yeah. but I think the story and the, the six, like the execution of this is fucking phenomenal, man. I have more notes, but Good, this, this movie is fucking great. I don't know. Yeah. No. I came it's out so well executed too on, on how he layers. I don't know if you're watching it for the first time, you might not catch that they're the same and like all these things that he's saying are alluding to this. So I just think it's very well put together. And for that time period when it came out, it's probably just a mind fuck for anybody who saw it, you know? What I was noting too is like any movie that tries to do like this type of thing nowadays, obviously we know it a little more, but the way that they hint at stuff and the way that they go about like teasing how a, a twist could happen like this fight club doesn't it gives you 50 hints straight right. up but like for some reason the filmmaking doesn't like accent it to make you think like there's a weirdness happening you're just like these are two characters they're real like and yeah. for some, i don't know it's like uh, i couldn't put my finger on like how they did it but this one feels like there's every hint but you're not looking at them at all. Whereas like other ones, yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, that's hinting at something there. You know, like, I don't know. Yeah, that was just, I, Fight Club I think, is perfect in that way. 
what an example of that like that i noticed in this watch through was like um when he's mentioned he's like yeah basically tyler and and marla would never be in the same room right you know and like every time she you know immediately she leaves he walks in mm-hmm. you know can't talk you know don't talk to her about me all that kind of stuff um yeah i don't know I, like i caught more of that this time where i was like like if you if you didn't get all the other like the 40 other hints like that should tip you off Right. And if if you didn't catch when he said this conversation is over, like that's just like slap you in the face. Like right. starts to pay attention. Word, obviously, yeah. a little more. And like Tyler's not here. Tyler's not. He went away. And like, yeah, yeah. Who the fuck are you talking to? Yeah, Marla's like. like uh-huh. Yeah, it, it starts to snowball. Like the hints start to become more blatant. But yeah, yeah. Which um, I mean, just goes into the layers of it, man. The narr- First of all, the narration too. Mm. I think does. Oh, it's like probably like one of the best uses of narration, I would say, just because yes. it's such an internal dialogue of like shit I was wondering happening too. Because like I'm, I'm not huge on narration, but for some reason yeah. I love this one. <laughs> like it, it yeah, feels man. so necessary. And obviously he's like, cause he's crazy, and you need to have these little inner inner dialogues. But I mean, there's like I don't want to like an hour of just narration total in this movie. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so oh, much, but yeah. it's. It works. Good, man. I listed every single one of the Jack's things because I was like, you know, does this tell a story here? It kind of does. If you want me to read them out, it yeah. the starts with Medulla Umgungata, which he's like, you know, I'm Jack's Medulla Umgata. Without me, Jack could not regulate temperature or emotions yeah. or any of this stuff. I was like, that's like just a perfect setup for this character because he's clearly fucking not like regulating. bipolar nuts. So yeah. Um, and then it goes to colon, then it goes to raging bile duct, then it goes to smirking revenge, inflamed sense of rejection, and then broken heart at the end. Um, hmm. Which is like, I don't know, there's so much psych. This is a movie that I was like psychologically analyzing, you know, the whole time, because it kind of begs you to do that, I feel yeah. like. Um, which is why I think, like you were saying, Alex, like you can pull so much from this even after your fucking 69th yeah. watch. Yeah. <laughs> So, why did you um, why did yeah. you not like it, Joe? I'm just curious. This watch through. So, uh, like, I guess I've just been listening to all of what you guys have been saying, and like, I agree with all of the things that you've said. Um, like, all those things were good. I feel like, I mean, this watch through. I know Brad Pitt's not real. I know that he's like uh, another personality of Edward Norton, basically. But like, um. I guess before I get into it, I'll just ask you guys, what do you think is supposed to be like the main takeaway or main takeaways like after watching this movie? So I, I kind of wrote a little bit about that because I thought like when he are first introduced to Tyler, uh, it's like it's like this part of Edward Norton's character that's like that he needs, right? Like that he needs to like shake, get him out of his fucking routine out of his what he's kind of like stuck you know gotta burn confidence for him <laughs> right so and then it becomes like oh we'll start this fight club we'll get you know we'll fucking we'll we'll beat it out like we'll, we need to release and vent and all that and and then he starts fucking marla so it's like you know for a lot i think it's at first like edward nord's character like regards tyler as like this fucking this his friend like this this guy that's gonna like help him just like grow and like become more of the person he wants to be. And then as it goes on, you, you just realize like how fucking toxic and like, like Tyler's character is, I thought embody just like the pure animal instinct of like humans, you know, Mm -hmm. like the guy who's going to go off, go everything by his gut, do whatever the fuck he wants in the name of like what freedom, self, self self-fulfillment, that kind of stuff. And like, when and, and Edward Norton's character at the beginning is like such the, you know, the cubicle in in, in between the lines kind of guy. It's like Edward Norton has a governor and and then Brad Pitt takes it out and he just cranks it to eleven, you know. Yeah. And he just goes off the rails and, you know, it's you you can have this boring lifestyle and that's fine. It might feel mundane, but there's a reason that the world isn't can't be chaotic, you know. I guess. Right. By the end of it, that's kind of. That's what I took. I was like, he killed this part of him that, you know, he needed at one point, but he, now he realizes, like, he, he can live without. Mm-hmm. It's still yeah, probably going to be He's learned there. from it all, obviously. He right? found his confidence without having that. Mm-hmm. 
right. to me relying on pure it. instinct relying on pure yeah that kind of thing to me why i decided to bump this up to a five star perfect movie with uh, extreme importance in my eyes is because this movie is capturing a generational feeling that especially people in 1999 i'm assuming were really on board for because this movie there's like a, a cult of america that this is like their movie you know what i'm saying like and I can feel it even now, 20 years later, on how, like, consumerism affects male psyche specifically, but, like, anyone's psyche about, con like, how you're not actually a member of society, but you're, like, being forced into its, like, rhythms, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You have to participate like in it no matter anyways. Yeah. yeah. So I felt a lot of pull towards a generational feeling and thought in this movie that I was on board for in a modern sense. Um, the unrest. Yeah, and just like people thought. not knowing their directions or what life is get trying to get out of them anymore and stuff like that. And overall, the message I got for like Ed, Edward Norton's character is that like a revolution can be justified and all that stuff, but if it gets out of your hands, it can be something completely horrific too. You know, like right. So yeah. that's where it's it kind of ends yeah. for me, where it's like justified horror, you know, like or it's like justified change kind of is it though you know like so that's i don't know there's a lot of that in what i got out of it but what did you think joe like what did, what did you take oh. i think it's interesting that you brought up the consumerism parts uh because like maybe it's just because i'm not an angry person look my job i do like uh, i look over patents for new inventions i see all the shit that the new companies are just pushing out every year because they just have to push around some new fucking like they just have to push around yeah, money products. and like you know that's just like how the fucking world works now you have to keep putting out like endlessly putting out new products and like that reinforces consumerism but i don't view it as like consumerism tells you how to think my main problem with consumerism is like sustainability aspects and like because i mean it's clearly not sustainable you're just putting out a bunch of random shit for no reason just to move money around because that's just how the system works when I mean, you can put out one thing but you put out five different things that do the same thing so mm -hmm. like i guess like that's like personally that's maybe that's just like my views so maybe that's why i didn't necessarily agree with that that part because like i feel like that's like kind of where um that's like kind of where it starts for edward norton is like at his job, uh, he realizes that like consumerism is like uh, like telling you how to think. And also his job is like just some fucking corporate bullshit where like uh, like obviously this company doesn't care about the people that are driving their cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, like if it costs like. More to fix it, then like it will be in a lawsuit, then like they're not going to do it. Right. So like um, like all that, I, I understand um and like then he can't sleep so he goes to the, all these support groups because the doctor tells him to do that and like he cries and that's how he can get to sleep um then he even learns like meditation like in those classes and later mm -hmm. in the movie he tries to use those um and brad pitt like negatively reinforces him in in a way like to f yeah. focus on the pain like mm -hmm. i feel like all brad pitt's character does is like reinforce like toxic masculinity and all these things that like are not healthy mentally healthy yeah. for you and i, I feel I like agree. that's mainly why yeah. i didn't like the movie because like i feel like it's just so fueled with toxic masculinity. I feel like this movie was written by like an angsty teenager. Like <laughs> I, I understand, like there are a lot of cool things with this. And like, if you didn't know that Brad Pitt was a figment of Edward Norton's imagination or like a different consciousness, like in Edward Norton, cause like, I don't know, I'm assuming he has multiple personality disorder. Um, like, yeah, that's cool. Like uh, finding that out for the first time is like really interesting. And like you guys said, like they left all the hints for you. You just like probably didn't put it together because like I feel like it's so well hidden, like with the twist. Um, but I don't know, as the movie goes on, I feel like it just like devolves into like, yeah, like it just kind of the toxic masculinity just kind of like festers to like right, everybody yeah. else. Even that guy from the fucking support group meatloaf fucking showed up, got his fucking <laughs> brains blown oh, out right. by the police mm -hmm. and, uh, or Jared Leto. And, uh, I don't know. I just like, 
I mean, I get at that point, from, I feel sure. like it just got way out of control. And then, like, there's that scene you brought up, Matt, uh, when they're in the car and Brad Pitt asks Edward Norton, like, what he wants, because he asked the two guys in the back seat what they want. They automatically knew. Um, and Edward Norton didn't know. And even at the end of the movie, like, because Brad Pitt asks him again uh, when they meet up in that building. Um, with the bomb, because Edward Norton's trying to deactivate the bomb in the in the van, and uh, like I feel like it's still unclear, like what Edward Norton actually wants by the end of the, maybe you guys could explain that to me, but I don't know. I don't think uh, he really knows either, though. That's where no. I end on it, you know. But I guess, like, I mean, and I don't know. I guess to a certain degree, I I get, I can relate to that, but like for the most part, I do know what I want. I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah. there's still like some question like up in the air and. Um, yeah. I, guess, I don't know. Uh, I understand that, like, I, I would a, like to fight yeah, the system, but like, I feel like yeah, I don't know. There are much better ways to do it than just causing anarchy. Like, right? I don't know. I no, just I, first that's off, pretty I much say... my main gripes with the. That's why I kind of didn't really like. I mean, yeah, yeah I, right. I, there were parts of it I really liked, but like overall, the content I did not like. No, so I. I guess that's I, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I kind of agree with, like, um, I think to speak to a little bit of what you're, I think you have a, I mean, the consumerism, you obviously have, like, a unique perspective on that that I think is, you know, totally valid, because, like, from, like, what you're saying, I can totally understand where you're coming from of, like, just, it's just necessary for how the world works nowadays, so, like, you can't really, like, you can't really fuck. Well, like, I guess what I was saying is, like, that. it's not necessary, like, oh. with, with how America works with with capital yeah i don't know i don't want to get into some bullshit here but yeah. like li like you could put out one fucking product but like you have five companies putting out the same fucking product and like yeah. you could with no fucking way to recycle any of those resources that you use so like that's the problem i have yeah. with it um yeah but i feel like the, that isn't how the world has to work like so, but i don't know so. well, I, well i think that's what like makes tyler durden's character so like attractive in the beginning you're like this guy you can totally like get on board with this guy and like the fight against the system and all that shit and like you know like we should change the system if the system's broken or doesn't you know mm -hmm. isn't what it could be um but i think that's i mean i by the end of it like the spiral you're talking about that's what i loved because it drive home the it drove home the point of like yeah this guy's clearly like kind of a he's wrong and he's and literally a psychopath end, like he's a psychopath and by the end literally he's like a the psychopath gets all these hypocrite. people on board and fucking yeah. starts a revolution like yeah. he, like edward norton walks into a room like spray painted with the the word war on it and it's like i don't know I, that was like an impactful moment to me because like holy shit like we're backing this guy who now like you know was all about like individualism and freedom and like f fighting the system and now all he's done is create like another system that is fueled by this toxic masculinity you know fueled by fucking like angst and anger mm. against the system and it's like that's not you know it's obviously not constructive it's destructive and you know he's got a tyler's got a fetish with that because it's like that's you know that's what gets the shit done that's what fucking works yeah, um, I mean, I don't think it glorifies that. I mean, no. you might think it does. I think it shows the repercussions the of yeah of yeah. the the animalistic behavior of you know just going out and beating the fuck out of everybody and right. That's what that's what I liked about it because at the end you're like, oh no, this like this isn't. I shouldn't be rooting for this guy because I guess like, like I, clearly not that was what guy. I was questioning because I couldn't tell. I guess right. if the movie was like glorifying right. it or telling you not to do it so like that's gotcha. i don't know well, where that's I kinda, like, it when it came out in like a fine line yeah i think there was a i also like, want people of audience that... you just said 1999 this actually what they did uh isn't possible today because of the internet so like <laughs> what they even did yeah. is not you couldn't even do it today so like hmm. that wouldn't work if you blew up those 11 buildings where they keep the fucking uh records of like your debt because I mean, like all everything's connected by the internet now. So if you blew yeah, up a couple of buildings, I mean, it would still be somewhere. Well, it worked back in '99, though, right? I mean, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. A bit dated, I suppose. Um, but I can see where you like. I can see the gripes because in '99, I think a section of the audience that really latched on this movie didn't get those hints. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. they took it at face value, and it's like, well, let's sort of like, let's fucking rally against, you know, like, 
Yeah. I get that. I think you guys all encapsulated the point pretty well, but I just wanted to say that like Brad Pitt, like you're saying, no, the animal instincts, this is an extremist personality that came into his mind at the, at, and he is going for the ballsiest things because that's not what a person would do, you know, like, and yeah. that's, what's like you said, alluring about him. And that's why it snowballs. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, it's, you have to like view Brad Pitt's not as like a person to listen to, but as a person that's like affecting Edward Norton's character. That's kind of how I saw it, but. I mean, it's clear he gets somebody to follow him. So he's, you know, a, a charismatic guy. You he, know, taps, well, he taps into something true, honestly, which is right. like, we are outside of our animal norms. Like, and then to get back mm-hmm. to like the roots of like, he's, he, I don't know. I mean, that's why the movie's so great. Is like, you got to give it to Tyler when he, goes and he puts the gun to the guy's head and tells him to go become a veterinarian. It's so fucked up and outside of what you should do. But in his fucked up mind, he's bringing good to the world, you know, like, right. And I don't know, I can get behind that mindset, even though I don't agree with it. So like, I find the balance of the movie to be pretty, pretty cool. And in the end, like you guys said, I think the message is there. If you take it right, if you take it the right way, you can see it. If you, I mean, if you view it, uh, that's, that's another thing I want to say that I agree with you, Joe, is like the reason I th- came out a five star movie this time is because this movie, I think, goes through like cycles for me of like, it's kind of edgy and kind of we- like, is it really like that fucking good? And then this one is like, this is fucking so fucking good, you know, like, so I think I've kind of like gone on the wave depending on maybe my personality at the time or something, you know, like, I mean, also, I mean, like we were talking before the stream i mean like you know about just like work and shit so i mean yeah. like i don't know maybe that pressures has something to do with it too you know i mean like <laughs> yeah, I I, i've started vaping because i get stressed at work now wow. <laughs> and i just need to get through the fucking get through the day by the end of it yeah it's bad yeah. Hey. Yeah, i don't know pick up a more satisfying hobby like drinking i do i did buy a lot of liquor <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Fuck me. uh, uh. I guess like outside of like the major themes, which is a pretty good discussion, I thought. But um, I don't know, just like strictly Fincher. I'm trying to kind of like get into like that guy's mindset on a director and level too. And one, he loves his opening sequences. I don't know if you've noticed. It, maybe it's a yeah. vestige of like the 80s, 90s. I think he drops them eventually, but. He does. Like, I mean, because uh, Seven had. A, I mean, I feel like that was a classic yeah. 90s shit. Right. Like for I Seven. Mean, was. I, I don't know. I didn't mention this when we talked about Seven, but opening with the song um, Closer by Nine Inch Nails, but just putting, you know, Closer to God instead of the actual, the rest of the song. I was like, well, didn't, I would have never thought to use a song in this mm. nature, but yeah. yeah. More to you. Yeah. But, but yeah, and then Succession Vibes with the game and. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, I think Alien 3 had one too. And um, when Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, that like everyone talks about the Daredevil intro, but like Girl with the Dragon Tattoo does it first, if I remember correctly. So I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the intro sequence is like that that waxy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I mean, I I respect a good intro sequence. You know, can't go too long in my opinion, but if it's got some good vibes, some good music, I'm down with it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me personally, I mean, I guess I could take it or leave it. Yeah, mm-hmm. if it's if it's interesting, sure. But I mean, also, I'm kind of just like, I mean, aren't we going to watch these credits at the end, too? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe sure. that's bad to say. But like, I no, mean, I don't, I don't know. know. Like, Most movies don't do them anymore. <laughs> that's for sure. I think, yeah. I think he, he, like, specializes in that just because, I mean, he started with, like, music videos. So I think he, like, kind of gets why they've all into kinda it pretty quick. Pretty good. Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 Um, so. I think he went back to some seven roots in filming. There's a lot of shadowy darkness and grime in these shots. Yeah. Uh, the rain. Every shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, uh, yeah. Or the basement. Now there's like a oh, foot of water down there all the time. And they're like, fucking, they got to turn on and off the power. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's just nasty. What a nasty man. house. Yeah. Man. Oh, my God. It's always raining, too. Like, yeah, always. Right. Like. <laughs> Um, I know in seven when he had it raining all the time, he was like, "Now we don't have to fuck with like lighting and the weather changing. It can always just be fucking raining." Damn. So maybe he was just like, "This is easy. Let's keep doing it, boys." Right. So. It does set like an unease to the film, like just in general. Yeah. Like you can never get sunshine, you know. So like, um, I don't. Also, I don't care how you know Marla, how like impoverished she is, going to that house and fucking. 
and just sleeping there, oh. I think I would fuck and then go back home and sleep. Right. Like, right. Her, her place wasn't much better. Yeah, I didn't mean, much better. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like her bed's a little cleaner. I don't know. <laughs> just... <laughs> but uh, man, I, I will say it. Like a couple things, like with the soap too. Uh, how basically like. I don't know, just for what it takes, like the process of making soap. Um, I don't know, you get like necessary ingredients for making explosives too. I feel like that was pretty witty. I mean, I don't know. Oh, I, yeah. liked, I liked that. Um, Nitroglycerin, I was kind of walking through that. Yeah, I didn't really catch that before, I don't think. But yeah, that's, I don't know. I thought that was, I don't know, pretty interesting. Ease it up for you. Yeah, yeah it does. And that, no, I, that fatty scene is magic. Dude, yeah. I, I I don't know why. I'm just like gonna get caught in there. I'm just like, just fucking leave it. Like, yeah, right? <laughs> ditch it. Right? right? Yeah. Look, That's it's got a stink in that house. Like, oh are, are they oh, just like God. immune to the scent of just fat? Yeah, yeah, dude. Dude. yeah. fucking sweat and God wood chips. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wrote down also. It. What's that? No, no, I was just saying the way he describes it, you can smell it. Like, yeah, <laughs> the description. Good description. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another highlight, I think, of this film specifically is the editing. I don't know if like you guys hyper focused on it that much, but there's so many different types of edits, and there's so many like the first 30 minutes of this movie is electric, in my opinion. Like the aggressiveness Definitely. of it all, and the cutting, and like the narration. I kind obviously. of agree. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's cra- It's so it like it's instant to me, like the hook and it hooked Emily, too, which I didn't think this movie would hook her. But she was on board the whole movie to watch because of obviously because it's there's a mystery there that you want to kind of get behind, too. But uh, yeah, I don't know. The editing, obviously, there's like little frames of dicks, but there's good transitions <laughs> throughout and good like stylized edits, like when he's doing the we are the ever or the all singing, all dancing. It's like this like reverby, yeah. like film stock type thing. And I'm just like. You know, what? I don't know. Good shit. Another like neat little thing I picked up watching this time too. Um, how like Brad Pitt's character Tyler Durden like splices in like one frame into the reels, <laughs> yeah. but like I like I feel like that's like kind of meta because like he's also spliced into frames of like this movie oh, yeah, no, like yeah. you know at the beginning like I don't know. So I didn't catch it and until this walkthrough either, but like uh, when it goes back to him with the gun in his mouth. And he's like, so what would your last words be? And he, you know, pulls it out. He's like, I still got nothing. And he goes, yeah. oh, flashback humor. Flashback huh? humor, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, I'm not quick. Yeah, that's yeah. clever. Yeah. yeah, that's a nice touch. Uh, also, I mean, I love Brad Pitt. Fantastic actor. I think this is one of his most transformative roles. Um, a lot of the times you kind of just see Brad Pitt doing his Brad Pitt shit, which is ultra charming, and you definitely want to watch it, but... I feel like this one, he just like went all in and like unhinged and kind of, I, I saw a different character here a lot of the time, whereas most times I see Brad Pitt, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. Feel that. Now, one of the, the thing that tipped me off where I was like, where it drove home the point of like, yeah, this guy's clearly like the, the, uh, animalistic antagonist was like when after the car crash, after he's like asked him what he, what Edward Norton wants again and like, like out of life. Um, and then he's just like, you know, he's fucked up and he's like, Tyler's just sitting there and disappears after that. But he says, uh, like, wit- like, uh, witness, like, or think like envision you on a top of the Sears tower, witnessing tiny figures, sowing corn and cutting venison down below. It's like, clearly, yeah, it's like, cl- like this guy is out of, t- like, clearly out of touch. You should not be listening to this influence, like horrible influence. Like, so I don't know. That really drove home the point of like, bang, I'm going to kill this thing this this horrible part of me and get rid of it yeah i also like i mean well i don't know i guess edward norton's a crazy person anyway but like i mean i don't know it like went out the fucking yeah, back just, i guess yeah. like is that like like subconsciously just like edward norton like from shooting himself that's why he got rid of tyler yeah. like brad pitt or like because like i guess like i also didn't really understand that like after he like shot into his like brad pitt just wasn't there anymore and I'm like, why? Like, 
That's a good, I mean, that's a gripe that I couldn't get behind. Like it's, it's yeah. gotta be just a psychological, he put, he took the action, yeah. you know, and that's enough. I, I guess yeah. like what I kind of thought because of like how Edward Norton was acting after that, cause he seemed like much more calm, cool and collected. Like you guys said, like he didn't need Brad Pitt's character. Like he didn't need Tyler Durden anymore, yeah. uh, which I kind of agree, but like in my opinion, he almost turned into him based on how he was acting after that. But I don't know. Maybe that was just how I interpreted it. I mean, um, you can maybe say that. You can maybe say that. Yeah, I think yeah. there's a good but like, then again, ending here. kind Because like, I feel like that's why I kind of, that's why I asked you guys, like, what were you supposed to get out of this? Because like he turned into the fucking like what you just said, the fucking animalistic antagonist. I mean, if, mm-hmm. if that is like, I don't know, maybe that was just my interpretation. But like, I think he became the ultimate version of himself, like, and now he yeah. can use Tyler's teachings, but he took all he said all his followers to leave him like he wants to Marla safe. He's still him. I think he's got. Yeah, he's a changed him slightly. That was I'm a not big be thing. Like a good person still or like know what he's doing. He's still kind of on the outs of society. But yeah. No. Uh, yeah. I, I yeah, I agree. Um, I was I was uh, something I glossed over was that i wrote down was like that was a big theme i think i picked up on this time that i didn't last time was like the theme of control of like like who's in control when and why like for what you know like why does he's got insomnia like edward norton's character is blacking out clearly when like tyler durden thinks he should be in control to get shit done and then by the end of it yeah like you're saying i think it was more of a culmination of like he has tyler durden he has this part of him that he's killed but will like always remain and but he's just like he's managed it now he's couldn't he's figured out that like you know if he a little needs too it, late because now right? the buildings are about to come down you know like that's kind of the, yeah. the irony of it all to me you know like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah for sure that's right okay <clears throat> yeah. i don't know i i, I, yeah, I yeah. get the control thing though for sure like i was just thinking yeah, about, I think some scenes, about that too yeah uh, like with his boss where like he's in control a lot of the time and it shifts totally to <laughs> edward norton's character mm-hmm. you know that fucking psycho rant about going in and shooting up the place yeah, yeah. jesus Be man very careful. that's something i feel like no one would write nowadays just the state of i do agree writing. though joe because i haven't read any of other like chuck palinuk stuff but i i know like from other people telling me that he's a very edgy writer and I think that's why Fincher's touch on this made it magical for me. Like he mm-hmm. took the best of it and like didn't didn't get all the edgy shittiness on it. You know, he took a lot of that off, in my opinion. But well, I'm pretty sure the author also said he prefers the movie to his book. So I've heard that before. That. Uh... Yeah. yeah, I think he said that last week too. So. Well, Pretty shit, cool. man. That's a uh, that's a good movie, man. In my opinion, you know what's What's kind of crazy too, when I was watching it this time around, was I remember when Django came out in the the Mandingo scene. Everyone was saying how brutal it was the the fight scene. I don't know; these fight scenes felt pretty on par with like the brutality of the punches landing, and you you just kind of feel it, you know. You feel the raw flesh on flesh. Oh yeah. So I don't I know. Mean, I just I just yeah for sure. Django was intense, but like. This was also intense, I guess. I don't know. I just think Tarantino gets a lot of flack for violence in his movies, but like this shit's been around, you know. I think this movie uh, did get a lot of flack for that violent nature. Oh, did it? And, or this like yeah. the ideals and stuff, obviously. But sure, person, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, but I agree, man. That scene with Brad Pitt where he's getting pummeled and just laughing it off is one of yeah the best scenes in the movie and one of the most viscerally disgusting, like scenes ever like yeah you don't know where i've been man yeah like dude literally throws up one of the fuck yeah puking blood yeah Yeah. crazy and then of course the jared leto fucking just straight up brutality that's the one line that that guy though that's kind of edgy and maybe a little too much (laughs) where he's like i just wanted to destroy something beautiful that's the one where line where i'm just like okay <laughs> right. That's, a little for That's me. what I'm talking about. The fucking teen angst, dude. Yeah, I get you. I get you. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what's next week? Panic is Zodiac Mo- next? Panic no, Mo- Panic Mo- is Mo- next, right? Yeah. I'm just. I, I think so. Zodiac. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen Panic Room. So I think has anybody seen this one? Yeah. Nah. Yeah, no, no, sir. Cool. Everyone's seen Flight Club. Now we'll go fresh faced into Panic Room. See how that. See what that one's about. Yep. Yeah. It'll be fun. It'll be a different discussion. 
Right, well, thanks for joining us, or guys, thanks. on a, another director's dive. What's up? I was just going to say one more note was, I think this was a uh, successful turnaround from the game where he tried to have that cool twist, and then this one was like, I could show you I could land a twist ending, you know? It'll yeah, please. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, my God. <laughs> he improves. He improves. I mean, you're so right, though. Like... It's like Alien was like, he was bouncing back on seven, like, please, I could do a good fucking drama, guys. And then the game comes out. He's like, ah, fuck, I did it again. So. I can prove it. Seriously. I have a theory with Fincher's films that uh, I don't know if I want to say it because I don't want to like negatively impact your viewings, but I looked at his filmography and I think he follows a trend of like highs and like not caring about the next one and highs and like kind of like, yeah. I don't know. Every other film in his filmography is a perfect film. And then the ones in between are just like, you know, that's pretty good. <laughs> so, like there. Panic Room, I think, is going to be one of those yeah. where it's just going to be like, eh. We'll Zodiac's right after that. So, like, right. yeah, Zodiac. I'm assuming this is going to be the dip. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. Zodiac fucks, and we know it fucks, you know? So it's just like. Yeah. I'm yeah. curious to see if it's going to live up because now, like you said, no, I think this this one might have jumped above Zodiac for me now, but I'm not, I don't know. I got to oh, yeah. wait till the rankings at the end. So. Yeah, like you said, two social networks in there. I did. I forgot about that one. That's, that's social be... network is just fucking perfect. I don't know. Good. Uh, it's a written so so well. Two hundred pages of dialogue. Fuck yeah. We'll get to that one soon, but, though. A couple weeks, but yep. uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks for joining us again, guys, and we'll see you on the next director's dive for David Fincher. Yep. Number five. Yeah.